Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to insert a Foley catheter into a male patient. So let's go to the lab. Wash our hands. Provide patient privacy. Verify our patient using two identifiers. Excuse me, sir, can you please state your name and date of birth for me? Name and date of birth. And then it matches what's on their wristband, so this is the right patient. So explain to the patient that you're going to be inserting a Foley catheter today. You want to get them in a good position, so get the bed up to a working height for you so you're not bending over and hurting your back. Pull down their covers. If they're capable of doing so, have them bend their knees. Not every patient is gonna be able to do this. If they just had like a hip replacement or a knee replacement or something like that, they're gonna have a hard time with this. But it's gonna be much easier for you if they're able to bend their knees and spread their legs a little, okay? Then you're gonna expose their area. You wanna get everything ready beforehand because once you start opening your kit, you're gonna to have to be sterile and you don't wanna accidentally have to touch something like a gown or a blanket. So we have our Foley kit. And if you can read on there, it says that this is a 12 French. So that's the size of this catheter. Standard size catheters for an adult are 14 to 16. This is a practice one. Uh, we do actually have a size 12 catheter that's usually for like younger girls. So let's open it up. Another thing I wanted to point out on here is it also says 5 ml. So that's how much the balloon should be inflated to. Now I know this kit comes with a syringe that goes to 10 ml, but that doesn't mean you need to use all 10 ml. So go to whatever it says. It says it on the packaging and it'll also say it on the catheter tubing and I'll point that out. So when we open a sterile package, we first want to open away from ourselves, then side, <coughs> other side, and then towards ourselves. And then I always give it a little spin. This one inch border here, okay, this is considered not sterile. Now we can get our things out. So we can take our gloves, our sterile gloves. I'm gonna try not to break sterility, but also try to show you everything I'm doing up close. So we'll open our gloves. Without touching the outside, right? I'm only touching the bottom. Then to put on our second glove, we're gonna sneak our fingers in here. See how I did that? Okay. So I'm not actually touching anything. Okay, now we have our sterile gloves. Pinch this in the middle because this part's still sterile. Get rid of it. Now we can get all our supplies ready. I highly recommend getting your supplies ready so that way you don't find yourself in a predicament where your non-dominant hand is dirty and you are stuck using one hand. So we can take our sterile drape. We want shiny side down. So that's that side. Turn this side down. Then we'll take our cover and cover the patient. Okay, making sure that we're not accidentally touching anything. Now we're going to get all of our things set up and prepared before we put it in. So we're going to open our swab sticks. Now these are practice ones. Okay, so they don't actually have betadine on them, but in the real world, they would have betadine on them. Very important that when we do a Foley catheter on our patients that we are assessing for a shellfish allergy or latex allergies. So we have our betadine swabs ready. I'm just gonna scooch this stuff like this. This is our lubricant. Um, sometimes it comes in a little package like this. Sometimes it comes in like a little syringe and you can just squirt it onto your tray. So we're just gonna open it and put it on our tray. There we go. 
the side. Now this part is optional, but I highly recommend it because it's going to be easier for you later on. So take this part off. Okay, get rid of this and then attach your syringe. Some kits will even tell you that they want you to attach the syringe so that you can test the balloon. And then some kits say don't do that because they're worried that if you inflate the balloon uh, prior to insertion, it's going to be more difficult and more painful to insert. So read your instructions. It'll let you know should you test the balloon or not. When I say test the balloon, this is what I mean. Let me show you. So we're going to take our normal saline, attach it to our tubing, and then let me just hold this up for you so you see what I'm doing. And then I'm just going to press it in. You see how it's inflating? So that's testing the balloon, okay? And again, just always follow the directions. And then what I like to do is, I just like to leave this in here. I like to leave it all the way set up, so that way when I'm ready to go, all I gotta do is grab it. Now, we can actually touch the patient. And at this point, I'm gonna take my non-dominant hand, which is my left hand, and I'm gonna contaminate it by touching the patient. So with a male, what you wanna do is you wanna take the penis, and then you wanna stick it straight up towards the ceiling. Okay? In a comfortable manner for the patient, of course. But ideally, you want it to point straight up. Then you're going to take your three swabs. You're going to take one and then go around the closest part. And you're only going to go once. You're not going to go a bunch of times like this, right? You're just going to go one time, done, get rid of it. Now it's dirty. Take your second one, go slightly lower, slightly beneath where you just went, go around one time. Get rid of it, it's dirty. And then finally, one more, all the way down, and then get rid of it. Now, if this patient was not circumcised, you would have to pull back the foreskin to do this. So don't forget that. Now, we're gonna insert our catheter. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna dip it in our lubricant that we opened, okay? Take this little box with us, we can put it down here. It doesn't matter, it's not gonna hurt the patient going to have the patient take a deep breath. Let them know this shouldn't hurt, but it might be slightly uncomfortable. We're going to insert the catheter. So how far do we insert it? How do we know how far to insert it? So you want to insert it until you see a urine return here in the tubing. Now you might encounter some resistance on a male patient because of an enlarged prostate. If you do encounter resistance, I want you to keep pushing through it, past the resistance, until you see urine. Resistance doesn't necessarily mean you're in the right spot, especially if they've had an enlarged prostate. So keep pushing till you see urinary return in the tubing. That's how you know that you're in the right spot. So let's say we've done that. Now we're going to inflate our balloon by pressing 5 mLs in our syringe. Now we can disconnect and we don't need to be sterile anymore at this point. Clean up our little mess here that we've made. Now the tubing, since it's in, we're going to attach it with a stat lock on top of the leg. We don't want to put it under the leg. We don't want the tubing under the person and that they're lying on top of it because this could cause pressure sores on their leg. So we're going to attach it here. Now we need to attach it to the bed. It's very important that we do not hook this on a movable part of the bed, like a side rail or something like that, okay? We wanna attach it into an immobile part of the bed. So we can attach it right here, and we are below the level of the patient's hips. If we were to do it like up here or something like that, okay, that's gonna cause a backflow of urine, which is gonna cause uh, retention and pain for the patient and possibly infection. Okay, so making sure that when we hook the bag, that we're hooking it on a non-mobile part of the bed and that we're hooking it below the level of the patient's waist. So one thing I wanted to show you here, just like I said on the packaging, it says that it's a 12 French and that we put 5 mLs in the balloon. It also says it on the tubing. So every catheter should say this. When you go to document, you want to make sure you're documenting what size French. So 12, 14, 16, whatever you're using, you want to make sure that you're putting that in your documentation as well. And if you're not sure where to find that information, it's on the tubing here and then it's also on the packaging. What happens when it's time to discontinue the catheter? That's actually a lot easier task than uh, putting in the catheter. So you'll only need two supplies for this. You'll need an empty uh, syringe, and then you'll need a washcloth. 
And of course, you should definitely be wearing gloves. The patient might ask, is this gonna hurt? It should not hurt to remove the catheter and it should only take a couple seconds. So what we do is we take our syringe and attach it and then we're gonna pull back because what we're doing is we're deflating the balloon. We're getting the water out of there. So we'll take our water out. All right, that's good. Tell them take a quick breath, put the washcloth underneath. One, two, three, done, it's out. We're gonna dispose of this. We're gonna provide peri care to our patients now and let them know if they have to go to the bathroom, if they have to have that first void, that we will help them. So to put on their call light for that first void, we wanna see it, we wanna know the color, the consistency, the odor, and the amount.